Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. I'm going to take a walk today in the garden and kind of show you what's going on. Um, it's been uh, raining and storming here uh, overnight and uh, we still have more storms coming through today. Um, but uh, since it's overcast and cool, I figured I'd come out and quickly shoot a video for you guys to see um, how the garden is doing. We've had severe high heat um, as a lot of you probably have depending on where you're from. And then uh, like I said we just had some some severe storms coming through. Uh, we have more coming through. Uh, so uh, let's take a walk before the next one rolls through. So what we're looking at here is my uh, bee balm. This is a four-year-old plant, and this is the first time I've seen this many uh, blooms on it. Usually, um, I'm harvesting my bee balm to save for medicinal purposes. I've had quite a bit uh, from last year, uh, so I just kind of let this one go um, and let it uh, bloom. It is so gorgeous. Um, the bees are loving it. I'm not sure if... Um, the camera's picking it up or not, but there's a lot of bumblebees and tansy wasps and other things just really enjoying that. And I did not notice, I knew that I had this beautiful purple one here. This is um, a beautiful light, light lavender, uh, pinkish purple. Um, I knew I had this one. And then my one of my friends was telling me about a red one that they had. So I was trying to order a red one from Baker's Creek for a while and they've always been out. Um, I finally got some red and I planted them in another spot in the garden, but then when this guy um, bloomed this year, look at this, I actually have the red too. It's, a, it's more of a um, uh, darker purple, um, uh, beautiful color. You can see Mr. Bumblebee right there. I'm not scared of bumblebees at all. Um, they're non-violent um, they're just as curious of what you're doing as you are um, them so bumblebees don't bother me so this is my pollinator bed and just look how gorgeous it is I'm so thankful I have my um, these are bachelor buttons or co corn flowers and then I have calendula my um, safflowers have finally completely bloomed out now I have three different colors in there I have a lighter yellow uh, the deeper yellow and then the orange, orangish red. It's almost four different colors in there, depending on how technical you want to get. And then I have uh, borage and nasturtium. Um, like I said, we've had some severe, some severe storms, so you can see the damage of the wind and the torrential rain has knocked down um, my flowers um, quite a bit. But um, they're still alive, <laughs> and the bees are still enjoying them. And then I have, this is red coxcomb here. I also have some Gallardia tucked right there. You, it's hard to see because again, the borage got knocked down over my nasturtium and my Gallardia. And then my tansy. And the tansy has put out flower buds, but um, they have not opened yet. And I was just amazed at how minute those flower buds are. They have not opened yet. But they're still really cool. So this is my tansy. And then this is my beet bed and my kurabi. We pulled some beets out. Almost uh, done. The rest of them will get pulled out and then they'll be succession planted with something else. And then the kurabi, same thing. I'm growing cats here. I mean, look at that beautiful cat right there. It's about ready to be harvested. <laughs> oh, anyways. And then my fig trees. My peas are starting to die back, um, and then I planted um, right underneath them. Those are succession planted with pole beans, and they will grow grow up the peas. So it'll already provide an extra trellis system for them. And then this is the yellow coneflower. It's also known as a narrow leaf coneflower because it has very narrow leaves. This is the other bee balm. And like I said, I thought I had planted the red, but it turns out it is the very light purple. <clears throat> and my hyssop, the cone flower. This is the regular cone flower, the purple, that a lot of people are used to. 
and then I also have this is um, white whorehound here and then I have some yarrow tucked in there um, these are mammoth sunflowers here that haven't gotten knocked over thankfully <clears throat> I got a bunch of weeds in here too I haven't had time to to weed this um, but I have some more yarrow tucked back in there and some thyme. This is lemon variegated thyme. It's really beautiful. This is more yarrow. Um, I don't know if the camera can pick it up very well. It's starting to go pale now. But this was the pastel colors and it had the white, uh, yellow, and pink colors here and it's really really pretty. This plant uh, is my valerian. Uh, it's dying back. It was as tall as uh, the roof line here of the garage. But it's now dying back it's time to cut it down um, and then it will regrow some new growth it's like um chives uh it dies back and then um it starts growing you can see all the new growth right down there it starts growing new growth and my lemon balm and then back tucked in here it's hard to see again with some of the weeds that like to grow really quick i have a uh, peach coxcomb back there this is my rose and flower bed, and it's kind of uh, a, a wild fly, flower habitat as well. I got all sorts of stuff tucked in here, lots of different weeds, because um, this is really rich and fertile right now. Um, the wood mulch that we had broke down really well last year, so this is very fertile. Um, but I got a lot of different stuff in here growing, so. One thing we noticed is our grapevines, they're just really exploding this year. We've got to get um, our strings run from the top of the pallet up to the bracer board there because they're starting to grow up here onto this wire and we can't have them here. This is an electrical wire that uh, electrifies the fence back there. So we actually have to train them to go that way. And there's lots of grapes on that plant. That's a three-year-old plant. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. This is my corn patch. Um, when I had planted it back in June, uh, we had lost 50% of it to a uh, snap frost. Um, so we had to replant 50% and then the other 50% survived and just kept on growing. And look how beautiful that is. Um, the tallest ones back there, they're about six foot tall, not including the tassel part, just to the top of the plant right there, six foot tall. Um, I'm really excited about that. These are um, blue, blue Paswaga, it's the Indian corn. Um, and then I have planted with them um, Cherokee Trailer tiered beans, a native variety of drying bean, and then blue hubbard squash is in here as well. So this is the Three Sisters garden bin area. Um, I've had to replant a couple times due to the frost and other things. Um, but it's coming along really well. So excited about that and we'll see how it does. <clears throat> and there's some of the blue hubbard squash here because this area had um, uh, corn too but this corn died back and this is the younger corn here that I had to replant and then I don't know if I can show it to you there's some some beans um, it's been a really hard year so I don't have a lot of beans growing here because they just did not um, sprout and germinate and whatever then the back area there is all potatoes and then these are all Roma tomatoes and I use cages for the Roma tomatoes uh, because they are, they are a determinate type, which they grow as a big bush, and that's it. So I um, support the bush with these heavy-duty um, mesh cage or wire cages for now. I'm hoping eventually, um, within the next year or so, to actually build a bigger cage. Uh, because even though these are heavy-duty, um, they're still... For as big and bushy as Romas can get, um, they're still kind of flimsy and they will eventually fall over. So, um, but it's a good starting point. Then we're going to walk around my tansy. <clears throat> this is one of my trellises. Um, I had to replant this a couple times, so the crops here were non-original 
plan, but they are what got put here. Um, I was supposed to have uh, Chinese noodle long beans growing up right here, and then I had interplanted petunias um, because beans and petunias get along really well. The petunias bring in the pollinators that help pollinate the beans. Uh, my beans all got killed with that frost, um, but the petunias survived. So now my petunias are huge, and uh, tucked in here, my replanting is um, some tomatoes, uh, big rainbow tomatoes. You can't see them right now because the petunias are just everywhere, but eventually they'll be growing up this trellis here. <clears throat> and then we also have dill in here, and right next to it is the, these are red currant tomatoes. They're very, very petite. Um, the the uh, plants themselves are very, very petite. Very, very tiny, delicate plants. So you really have to be careful with them because you can break them quite easily. They're an indeterminate, so they're going to grow up this on both sides. Um, really, really love those things. Um, another name for them is like teaspoon tomatoes or something because they're really tiny. So that's what's going on there. Then over here I have blue hod beans. Um, I had to push them back against the trellis because the wind had knocked them down and they hadn't quite gripped the trellis yet. So they're tied back against the trellis and then they'll grow up and fill this in. I have another tomato there. And then this is a type of squash. I've replanted this area three times as well. So I don't remember what squash this is anymore because originally I planted buttercup. And then I planted acorn, and I don't remember what that one is now, whether it's an acorn or a buttercup. Um, so we'll see. Okay, so this bed has my uh, calendula, or not calendula, sorry, chamomile. It's got some red Russian kale, some sorrels tucked in here, and then I have my bell peppers tucked in around the sage. <clears throat> and then I have... Um, five color silver beet, otherwise known as Swiss chard back there. Again, these are my peas. They are starting to die back. Um, so what's left on there are pods that I am saving for the seed swap and for myself as well <laughs> so I can replant. I'll be replanting the peas in the fall. Um, so yeah, so I'm just letting some of these peas dry out and we do have some pods that are almost there and then we'll be replanting them. And then again along the bottom, I have the peas, the beans planted that they'll grow up this. <clears throat> and these are my elderberries. They're getting really big. See the size of these guys? Something happened to this one. We're not sure what. My husband followed the branch all the way down, but he's not sure why that one's dying. So we actually have to cut that off there so it doesn't spread a disease to the rest of the, the bush. Alright, I heard the thunder coming so I need to hurry up with the video apparently before the other storm gets through. Uh, so this is um, dino kale and then I have planted in here, this is basil. I think this is Greek basil. I grew two dwarf varieties. One's Greek and one's globe. So it's it's one of the two or I might have actually both of them planted here. Um, if you watched a previous video you know that um, th my garden was ransacked with slugs and I almost lost everything to the slugs. Um, I had spread a mixture of salt and flour onto those plants because I didn't have any more sluggo or anything to kill those bad boys. And people were worried I was going to kill the plant. My plants are doing fine. And then we got the cabbages, watermelons going on. I lost a bunch of this bed to the slugs so I just replanted with what I had. And my garlic that I harvested. And then my beans, I replanted this area quite a few times. I got calendula and some other things going on. My loofah, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a loofah gourd in time to dry, but at least it's growing. And then some more cabbages, and then that area is going to be growing cucumbers when I get them planted after the storm. So that's what the garden's looking like right now. 
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope your day is blessed, wherever you are. Bye!